my name is Dan Brett. I'm the CSO of Countercraft. Today you're with me on the Founder Chat and I'm here with David Barroso, our CEO. Hi David. Hey Dan, how are you? Oh, great, thanks. Today we're going to talk about BPF Backdoor, which is something David's been researching recently and I'm really interested to find out what's going on. David, can you tell me something about BPF Backdoor, please? Yeah, sure. So BPF Backdoor or BPF Door, and the name that some people are using, even though others are using other names, uh, it's, I guess that's something that is really interesting because it's, it's a backdoor that is being used in Linux and Solaris systems. So it's something different to the typical Windows backdoors that we see every day. Right, okay. And is this something brand new that's just happened like right now? Or has it got a bit of a history to it? No, I, I guess that the first time BPF door was detected was like a five years ago. So five years. this tool uh, is like a persistence tool. It's been used uh, for a while, yeah. Okay, so if it's got a five year history, how come no one's been detecting it and eradicating it before now? So yeah, so different companies, they have been detecting this uh, okay. backdoor, but uh, as it seems that it was only being used for targeting specific companies in Asia. So perhaps that was the reason that wasn't so well known because it was just focusing on some specific companies, usually telcos, in Asia and Pacific, yeah. So it's like a, a tool that slipped under the radar. Okay, now what makes it complex or interesting or something worth studying? So I guess that the main features it has is uh, that it's using a BPF packet filter. So it's just sniffing the traffic with that filter, so it's only capturing the incoming traffic with specific packets. And also, uh, once detects a specific combination of packets with a kind of password, then uh, redirects the connection to a random uh, port that opens so that you can use an existing normal connection like an SSH or web server or anything you are running, uh, but uh, they are using that existing connection for like a shell remote shell. So I think that's, that's a very nice feature. Yeah, that sounds really good. So it sounds like they've got a really useful way of maintaining persistence by basically taking over like normal comms channels. When they see a secret signal coming in, they then go and branch out and do other stuff. Yeah. Wow, that's really good. Okay, so how can I detect this in my system? What can I do? So I guess that we have two main options for detection. One is uh, if we talk about the network, uh, there is a specific feature that is, is, is something that is strange that is there, that if you try to connect to the backdoor without a valid password, the, the backdoor password, it will send back a specific UDP packet that you can detect. So you can scan the entire internet and that's something that people have been doing so that you can detect any machine that is compromised by this specific factor. So that's from the network point of view. And also from the host point of view, if you're running an EDR, you're running any uh, security tool that can detect that the process is opening, um, like the network traffic is listening to the network traffic, I think that could be another hint that something is happening. Why well, it sounds like two great ways, and at a network level or on the host level looking for things that are sniffing traffic on your hosts, okay? Might be through an EDR, or if it's on servers, maybe even writing your own code for that, okay? Yeah. Great, well listen, thanks for, for talking about BDA, no? BPF Backdoor. If you wanna know more, we've got a fantastic and in-depth blog post with loads of the observables we've seen from it up on the site. And David, thanks for your time today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Do subscribe, and get more founder chats as they come along. Thank you.